My wife is uh, my wife is white, which is not a big deal. It's not great. Some of my friends are like, oh, why your wife got to be white? Because I live in Seattle. Uh, I'm not gonna walk around looking for black people. I don't have that kind of time. So, wife is white. That guy was funny. These graphics are pretty sweet. I might watch the rest of this show. Yeah, laughs. I can dig it. Hey, welcome to Laughs. They let me host. My name is Zoltan Cassis. Usually, I'm just a comic on the show, but tonight, I'm hosting it. And uh, I don't know what I'm doing, so why don't we just roll straight to the comedy? Uh, I live in Brooklyn now with my girlfriend. That's right, I have a girlfriend. We are in a pretty serious relationship. Uh, we are married. Uh, I think this might be the one. You never know. Everybody gets divorced. My parents actually just got divorced at the age of 60, which at first is very sad, and then it's absolutely hilarious. Because <laughs> when you get divorced at 25 or 35, it's like, you know what? Maybe we got married too young. Maybe we should go our own ways and live the lives we're meant to live, become truly happy. When you get divorced at 60, it's like, I'd rather die alone. <laughs> Thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> the divorce rate in this country is the highest in the world. Highest in the world, USA. You, number one, that's right. They say we can't do math, we can do division. <laughs> highest in, I think the reason that the divorce rate is so high is marriage is just a promise. It's the biggest commitment you're ever gonna make. And all you do is go, Sure. <laughs> it's not even a promise you make. It's a promise somebody else makes for you and then you just agree. Do you, will you forever? Yeah. <laughs> you guys realize I do and why not are pretty much the same phrase, right? <laughs> you wanna go to a comedy show? I do. <laughs> How will we spend the rest of our lives together? Why not? <laughs> Just a pro, I break promises daily. Today I was in a Starbucks, this guy goes, I'm gonna go to the bathroom, would you mind watching my laptop? You know what I said? Why not? <laughs> then I left. <laughs> go ahead, ask me, do you have a new computer? I do. <laughs> Let me ask y'all something, y'all might get uncomfortable, but I don't care. What, what happened to tasers? <laughs> what happened, well y'all don't remember tasers? <laughs> well y'all can't use those no more? Just take, you, you ain't got to kill everybody, just tase them. <laughs> I'd be all down for police brutality if they didn't use guns no more. Just use a taser, at least you'd live to tell somebody. <laughs> Cause that's, look, that's the difference between a funeral and a good laugh. Ain't nothing more satisfying than seeing somebody that was talking stuff get tased in the ass. <laughs> He's sitting there talking, yeah, whatever, you ain't gonna do nothing. <laughs> Shut your ass up. <laughs> get in the police car. Yeah, it's been a big year. I got married, I got my American citizenship, baby, lots of stuff going on. Thank, thank you, yes. I got my American citizenship before I got my uh, husband, which was stupid, right? Because you know what's better than a diamond ring? Green card and a diamond ring. <laughs> well, that's how I did it, that's how I did it. Uh, my mom was my big motivator. She's a little four foot eight, tiny Korean woman. If you're wondering, I'm half Korean, half Sicilian. People always say that's an interesting mix, but it makes sense because dry cleaning and money laundering. <laughs> Go together perfectly, right? <laughs> but my mom, she was my big motivator. She always said the same thing. She was like, Mona, you have to get your citizenship because you don't speak Korean well enough. If you get deported, you'll get sold into sex trafficking. That's a crazy thing to hear on your first day of kindergarten. <laughs> So finally I went and I uh, signed up for the test. I took it in Tampa. Here's a fun fact. When you take your test in Tampa, it's located right next to the airport. <laughs> which is unnecessary pressure. 
Right? I was like, don't send me back to Korea on Spirit Air. I'll never afford that baggage. <laughs> so the night before, I call my mom up because I want the pep talk, right? So you do, you call your parents up. I get her on the phone. She goes right into it. She's like, Mona, you have to do good on the test tomorrow, right? Because you don't speak Korean well enough. <laughs> if you get deported, and I cut her off. And I was like, I know, I'll get sold into sex trafficking. She was like, bitch, you are too old. Hey, if you're enjoying the show, tell us about it on Twitter. We like hearing that stuff. We're very depressed people. But if you didn't like the show, why don't you keep that to yourself, all right? Stop spreading so much negativity. One little test for you all here tonight to see where you're at and your state in life. Uh, There's a difference between like if you really broke versus just being like, mm, when's that direct deposit gonna clear? Uh, <laughs> if you care about what day you get paid on, you're broke. Do you understand what I'm saying? And some of you are like, well, what do you mean what day you get paid on? And those people have too much money and you should see where they parked and follow them with a ski mask. Cause it's anti up time right now. Track them after the show. Because if you care about what day you get paid on, you've been in a situation where somebody has paid you not on the 1st and the 15th, when normal people pay people on, but on the 5th and the 20th. <laughs> How disrespectful to pay people four days after we all know the money is supposed to be there. <laughs> Who are you? Like if you go in for a job interview and you sit down and they ask, do you have any questions for us? And they're expecting you to ask about benefits and management track opportunities and you just hit them with a, um, what day do you pay your employees on? It's like, uh, I think we're bi-weekly, but mm, I did not ask about pay cycle, I asked about pay day. Uh, I'll have to check with HR, but I think we pay on the 5th and the 20th. You know what, I'll be in touch, thank you very much. I don't need this. Because the thing about the 1st and the 15th, if you broke, right, like, you still broke with a rhythm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, you could write your check in a timely fashion. You get drunk and buy something at the end of the month and be like, the money's gonna be there, it's gonna be there. I'll take a chance on Amazon. I just know I'm not mature enough of a human being to have a kid yet. Like, I haven't come up with a good reason why I personally would want one other than to be a jerk. That's not a reason to reproduce, you know? Like, you ever see somebody holding a small baby and they like to talk through the baby when they're holding it? Just like, oh, we're sorry we're fussy today because we didn't get our nap. No, we didn't. Oh, no, we got the boo doo 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 boo 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 like, I want to do that, but just be a passive aggressive jerk to my friends and family. You know, just let them know how I really feel through my shiny new baby puppet that I have that only speaks the truth and drops knowledge on people. You know what I mean? Just showing up at barbecues. Oh, look, Aunt Mary's here. <gasps> we don't let Aunt Mary play with you. No, we don't. Yeah, because that bottle of Oxycontin isn't a rattle. No, it isn't. <laughs> That's right, she needs to get her life together. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Look, baby, Uncle Gary's here too. We don't let Uncle Gary pick you up. Do you know why? That's right, cause it's only noon and he smells like bourbon. Mm. How's he gonna hold a baby when he can't hold a job? How's he gonna do it? How's he gonna do it? <laughs> Yeah, so I probably shouldn't have kids yet, yeah. I come up with different ways to keep my stress level low. And one of the ways I keep my stress level low, I keep white friends in my life. <laughs> you gotta have white friends. I grew up in New York. I lived in the South for years. I know the history of the South, but I don't look at race the same way other people look at race. White people and black people, we need to work together because there's more Mexicans coming. <laughs> And it's up to us to hold the fort down and we need to work on our relationship and become better friends is what I'm saying. <laughs> you sit at home and watch TV and they always telling you about the hole in the ozone and I'm like, what about the one in the fence? Who's on that project? <laughs> Fix the hole in the fence first. What a great joke. We'll be back with more Comics on Laughs right after this quick commercial break. Nailed it. Is this the camera? Can we do that again? There's gonna be more comics right after this.
Hey guys, welcome back to Laughs. I'm not really a host, but the security is awful here. Check out this next comic. This dude's hilarious, though. You're gonna love him. I was in Canada. If you have a chance to visit Canada in the winter, skip it. Uh, <laughs> I'm from Seattle. We don't have winter. We get two inches of snow every other February. It's perfect. You know what I mean? It's 40 degrees. Close the schools, you know. I was in Canada in November. It was negative 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And I know they use Celsius, but when it's that cold, the F stands for something else. That is ridiculous. <laughs> negative 32. Go Fahrenheit yourselves, Canada. I don't even understand negative temperature. Why does that exist? Do you know how cold that is? Negative 32. That means the guy who invented temperature never thought that would happen. That's how cold that is. <laughs> you know what I mean? He invented temperature, and he was like, zero is probably good for planet Earth, you know, whatever. <laughs> then he got to Canada, and he's like, oh no, this is way worse, ah! <laughs> Did we already send that out? Can we change it? I keep it positive, I live my life positive. I like to have a good time. I get excited very easily. Like if somebody tells me any good bit of news, I just turn into one of those inflatable guys outside of a car dealership. Hey, Sean, I got tickets to Suicide Squad. I'm telling you though, these student loans is killing me. I'm, I think my girlfriend and I, we're like the poor couple right now. We're like a super poor, but it's cool, we're gonna survive. We're gonna survive because, I don't know if you know this, but the poor kids always survive and the rich kids die. I'm telling you, any horror movie, poor kids live, rich kids die. Because the rich kids always think that scary sound is some of the nice crap in their house. Right, like, what was that? Oh, that was just the chocolate fountain. Yeah, but wait, what was that? Oh, that's just the Tesla charging. Okay, but what was that? Oh, that was just my room full of gold coins. A duck just dove in there. But the poor kids, they know what the two things in their house sound like, right? What was that? Well, it wasn't the fridge or the toaster. Let's get the hell out of here. Now they put the calorie count in the McDonald's menu. It's supposed to make you feel bad about eating McDonald's. Personally, I like that they put the calorie count in the McDonald's menu because now I know when I'm getting banged for my buck, right? <laughs> I order whatever has the most calories. That's how it worked. Oh, I only got $2. Oh, let me get the two double cheeseburgers. Yeah, yeah, it's got the most calories. Yeah, it's a trick I learned in jail. Watch your boy. Uh, <laughs> let me get the two double cheeseburgers. Oh, do you want a fish sandwich? I don't want fish. Get that fish sandwich out of it. Who is ordering seafood at McDonald's? Man, get that fish sandwich. Like, who goes to McDonald's for fish? You ever been sitting at home? Well, oh, I can go for some fish. Oh, McDonald's got fish sandwich on the dollar menu. Let's go get some seafood. No. It's not even real fish. It's a fish substance patty. McDonald's doesn't hire fishermen. <laughs> I've never walked past me. Oh, now inquire within, hire and fly fishermen, holding trouts on Monday, bring your own pole. No. They don't need fishermen, because they make the fish in Japan in between sweatshop shifts at the Nike factory. And they email the fish here. Hate to break the bread. It's funny, right? These comics are great. I love comics, because they don't judge you based on your career choices. And there's more of them coming up after this break. Welcome back to Laughs Comics Choice. I'm Zoltan, I'm a comedian, and I get to choose the comedians that get to be on this episode. It makes sense to somebody, not me. But anyway, let's go to this next lady. She's hilarious. Here's Lace Larrabee. You are awesome. I know I don't look like a comedian. I know I look like some rich guy's third wife. <laughs> I don't have a lot to show. For, uh, for my life yet, but there is the one cool thing that's been happening to me lately, uh, and it's something that my mom tried to warn me about for years. We used to play this fun game in our family. It was hours of fun. It was called Help Me Find the Whisker. <laughs> Has anybody played this? Play this when you get ready to go out, yeah? I'll break it down for you. It's usually somebody doing this, right? You've got the tweezers. 
You're both looking for like an eight inch long jet black hair. <laughs> Looks like it came off a Rottweiler. <laughs> Took 15 minutes to grow. Doesn't match the texture of hair anywhere else in your entire body. You know what I'm talking about. You go through an entire day of work, you get in your car, you look in the rear view mirror, the sunlight hits you and you're like, oh, f all my friends. Oh, f <laughs> Nobody, nobody saw this. <laughs> nobody could have done a courtesy pluck. <laughs> Nothing, couldn't help me out. I used to laugh at my mom and I was like, you're disgusting. And she's like, oh, you laugh now, honey. It's gonna happen to you one day. And I was like, no, it's not. And then I think it was, uh, what was it, Monday? I was, uh, I was getting ready and I was plucking my nipple whiskers and... <laughs> I was like, damn it. That where bitch was right. All right, not everybody laughed at that. <laughs> Let me tell you something, I did my research and I know that statistically, there's no way I'm the only woman in this room with hairiolas. So, <laughs> you need to stop being so judgy. This guy, uh, the producer, he told me I need to plug the website, so here we go. Go to LaughsTVShow.com and check out our upcoming shows, events, comics, clips, past episodes, all that good stuff. Right? Did I nail it? I think I nailed it. Let's go back to the joke people. <laughs> Fun new women. I had a woman recently uh, give me a wrong number. You ever given a guy a wrong number on purpose? Good for you. Good for you. This girl did, it was after a show, I got her phone number, I'm thinking, hey, I'm in town for tonight, better strike while the iron's hot. You know, I call her, I get three rings in, and I get, thank you for choosing Papa John's, is this gonna be for pickup or delivery? <laughs> and before I ordered, <laughs> something had occurred to me, did I get this number on accident, or is this just the cleverest marketing campaign ever? Because I bought a pizza. Is that what Papa John's is doing now, sending girls in the bar like, hey there, you big pepperoni? <laughs> Looking for some of that deep dish. Hey, I saved the best for last, because when we come back, we're gonna unveil Zoltan's favorite clip. All right. <laughs> We're gonna try to work on that title after these messages. Hey, welcome back to Laugh's Comics Choice. I'm Zoltan, if you haven't gotten that so far. This is our final clip and I chose it. And I bestow upon to you this. Man, I love my cell phone. Like, I absolutely love it. I love getting text messages from a wrong number. You know what I mean? Like, where you get a text and you're like, what? I got a text that simply said, why aren't you in school today? <laughs> For a second, I looked at my phone and I was like, did I have prior obligations to get to? So I text back, I was like, no, screw school. <laughs> then I get a text back that says, as your big sister, who is a sophomore in high school, it is important that you take your academic career as an eighth grader seriously. <laughs> so I just wrote back, I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna stay home and do LSD and paint. <laughs> Thinking that she would get it. I get a next text message I get simply says, I'm gonna tell the pastor. <laughs> and I was like, I can ruin lives right here from my couch. <laughs> right here. So I just text back, who do you think sold me the LSD? All right, that was actually a really fun show. I hope you had a great time watching it with me. And uh, I think that's, uh, what does that say? 
credits? Why do I say credits? Oh, you're dropping the credits. Oh, okay, so, so we're done? All right, so I just go home now? We're done? Everything's, yep, yeah, yeah, we're done. It's not me, Tube. It's not us, Tube. It's you, Tube, okay? Pull your weight. Like and subscribe so I can bring more goodness to your tube. That did not sound right. I am so sorry. I didn't know where I was going with that, and it went to a bad place. Just forget about your tube.